Hello, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I would teach you how to model a multi-phase centrifugal pump. Right, so in this lecture, we'll be learning how to model a multi-phase centrifugal pump. So I'll start by adding my components. Then I'll add my fluid package. Okay. Now, um, for centrifugal pump, you have the following um, instructions for specifying them. So, to specify your centrifugal pump, you have to attach inlet and outlet streams, right? to your centrifugal pump and then one of them must be fully specified then you also require an energy stream right then you need to specify either um, outlet pressure uh, pressure drop pressure ratio or the duty of the centrifugal pump right so you need to specify any of them so that is what we'll be doing in this uh, particular lecture so we are good here we can enter the simulation environment now um, there are two ways you can actually model your pump you can actually model them by forward modeling and then you can also model them by backward modeling right so i'll be illustrating all of that quickly then we will end with modeling the uh, multi-phase pump, right? So I'll be starting out with just modeling a simple centrifugal pump. Now, this is for forward modeling, so I will name it forward. So for forward, I will specify the, I will specify the um, inlet, I'll specify the inlet and then HISIS will do calculations for the outlet stream right so we have um, we have all of this so for this um, let me see okay so we have this we are good now for centrifugal pumps um, you are expected to send in a liquid feed right a feed that is in liquid phase to the centrifugal pump right so if you want to pump or increase the pressure of a gaseous um, substance you may want to use a compressor in that case but in this tutorial i'll show you how to model um, a pump that has two phases right multi-phase pump so I will be doing that. But first off, I want to show you how to model forward um, pump modeling. So we'll just make some assumptions for the for the feed, right? So here we'll just use water. Now, so our um, our feed stream is fully specified and it contains only water, right? So now. This is fully specified. So we have our model. Then you now see that the pump says unknown duty, right? You can go to the parameters page. Now in the parameters page, you can either specify pressure drop or you specify pressure ratio or you specify duty, right? So any of them would actually work in order to fully specify your pump, right? Either pressure drop, pressure ratio or duty or you can specify the outlet pressure of that particular pump, right? The pressure of the outlet stream, right? The discharge pressure. So you can do that by just specifying it. For example, you can say 2000 kPa. Now when you specify it, it calculates all other values like the pressure drop, the pressure ratio, the duty, then the power as well, right? the power requirement so it does all of that when you specify the um outlet pressure right when you specify the outlet pressure you can also click on this 
and then specify any of those that i initially mentioned so you can specify delta p and then it calculates the other values or you can specify your pressure ratio right and then it calculates the other values or you can specify duty right so let's try duty now now for duty let's say you just put a value right so it calculates every other thing that is actually required right so now um, another very important thing that is needed in this modeling is the um, adiabatic efficiency right so if your adiabatic efficiency is not inputted your model will not solve right your model will not solve if adiabatic efficiency is not inputted right so it has to be there and then the default value in the software is um 75 percent right it will be good for you to know that um adiabatic efficiency can range from like 70 percent to maybe 95 percent so any value within that range right so you are expected to specify your adiabatic efficiency and it is also important to know that this efficiency affects the um your power requirements right it affects the heat duty and the power requirement so at um let's say we specify let's say we remove this and specify the outlet let's specify the outlet pressure yes so um we specify the outlet pressure now we now specify the adiabatic efficiency as 75 right so now after specifying outlet pressure and adiabatic efficiency the duty is calculated now you see the duty is 1.25 right 1.257 kilowatts now if you for example if you um if you increase it to like 85 percent now when you increase it to 85 percent you would see that um the duty has um the duty has reduced right the duty has reduced to 1.109 right 1.109 so you see that an increase in efficiency would lead to a decrease in the duty of that particular pump right and if you reduce it to like 70 percent you see that the duty increases right so that's how it works so it actually affects your um your power requirements right so this is how to model the forward so for the forward modeling you would actually specify the um you specify the feed feed properties and then hysis will now calculate the properties of the outlet right now for backward modeling you would specify the now let's move this up here so for backward modeling you specify the outlet right so i'll be showing you the backward so this is um let's say this is three four four then this is let's say q1 so we have this so in this case you will be specifying the um let me uh, modify the okay i've modified it let me just name it backward So this is the backward model, right? So for this backward model, you will specify the outlet. Now the outlet, let me say, um, outlet is, uh, okay, let me use the outlet conditions here. Now we have 25, okay, we have 2000. So I'll just use that. So pressure is 25. yeah no temperature is 25 then pressure is 2000 right 2000 kpa then molar flow is 100 kilogram mole. then composition is water it's just a liquid stream so you enter this and then you click ok right you click ok then the outlet is fully specified so all we need to do is um specify any of those um, parameters any of these parameters or we specify the inlet pressure 
So if, for example, if you take the inlet pressure as atmospheric pressure, you see that the model fully specifies, right? So this is the backward technique of modeling a centrifugal pump. The backward technique would require you to specify the outlet, um, the outlet parameters, right? The outlet process conditions so that the software can calculate the inlet, right? So in this case, the um, software calculates the inlet properties while you specify the outlet properties, right? For backward, for forward, you specify the inlet properties and the software calculates the outlet properties, right? That is for forward, right? So this is the, um, this is the forward. This is the forward and the backward model, right? So, um, the next thing we are going to do now is for me to show you how to model a multi-phase pump, right? So I would name this model, this particular pump multi-phase. So let me just move it up. Now, let me change the name. So this is our multi-phase pump. Now in this pump, I'll send in both gas and liquid. In this case, it will be methane and water. Multi-phase pump. You have um, you have five six. Yes. So in this case, I will just um, I will specify the inlet. I'll just specify the inlet. So composition, I would use an Ecumula composition for this. So both of them 0 0.5. Now this is okay. Then we can specify conditions, atmospheric conditions. Then we have, um, okay. So this is fully specified, right? Your um, your feed is fully specified. Now we can specify, for example, let's specify the, um, let's specify the delta P that is pressure drop. So pressure drop, let me just say 2000 kPa pressure drop. Now on specifying pressure drop, you can see, um, the message, um, high C's has given. It says, um, it says, uh, vapor in inlet stream right vapor in inlet stream so if you want this particular pump to solve all you need to do is to click on this right click on this right here in your parameters section of your design tab design parameters you click on enable multi-phase pump right enable multi-phase pump right so if you click on it your um pump will solve despite having a vapor inside it or despite having a vapor phase inside it right so this is how to actually model um multi-phase pumps right now i think this um feature this feature actually comes up for um versions starting from version 11 right from version 11 upward so if you are using any version below version 11 you may not find this feature in your centrifugal pump right so before you um before you model a multi-phase pump you have to ensure that you are using version 11 or higher right either version 11 or a higher version of the software right so you enable your multi-phase pump and then it solves right so you have both vapor and liquid inside this particular pump and the pump is still solved and it's all right right so that's how it works right and um you can actually use curves as well to model your pump that is if you have um data if you have data for curves you can do that by clicking on add curve right and then you specify you specify the um, necessary data that you have, right? The flow, the head, and then the efficiency, right? Then um, based on that, the software will calculate. Um, let me delete this. 
based on your specifications here the software will calculate the uh the efficiency and then the power requirements right for this particular pump right so if you have data for curves you can actually input them here i think i will take curves in my compressor lecture probably that should be the lecture after this one i will be specifying curves in that particular lecture right so that's it so you can also specify your curves for your multi-phase pump as well by clicking on this right instead of using correlation you can use this to specify um pump uh, curves for your multi-phase pump right but this is the basic way to actually model a multi-phase pump using the software using aspen isis right so i have shown you how to model um a pump using the forward technique the backward technique and then i've shown you how to model a multi-phase pump so right uh for this particular tutorial i would like you to work on this okay let me see you can work on this um you can work on this so um we're attaching a centrifugal pump to the two-phase separator that was modeled in lecture three right the bottom outlet of the two-phase separator right so you specify the pressure drop of your centrifugal pump and then your adiabatic efficiency is um 75 so you are expected to determine the um you're expected to determine the the power requirements and the pressure head of the centrifugal pump right the power requirement and the pressure head now this is what i'm talking about right so um in the first lecture we did um lecture one we did material stream specification where we modeled the material stream and then we did stream analysis then in the second lecture we took valves we talked about valves and how to determine the pressure drop of valves using the software then we went to discuss the separators the two phase three phase and the tanks so what i'm saying for this particular um practice is that you should attach a centrifugal pump to this right here to this bottom outlet and then determine the power requirements and the uh, pressure head of that particular pump using the details so you can pause the video to get the information here and then you can actually model the centrifugal pump so with this we have come to the end of this lecture if you have questions about pumps you can drop them if you have observations you can drop them in the comment section like this video share with your friends then subscribe to this channel if you have not done so yet i hope you have been able to gain some knowledge in centrifugal pump and multi-phase pump modeling using aspen isis thank you for joining me in this lecture do have a good day